Okay, I'm getting ready to go hiking today out at Lila Sea, which is the mine that started all of that borax mining in Death Valley. Uh-oh, I'm crooked. Welcome. I always, I always think there's something buried in the rock wall. Oh look, here's a bottle buried in the rock wall and a little plant growing. Me and Lila Sea. Makes me think of the song, Me and Bobby McGee. Hi. Hi, I'm Jenny, and today I give you Lila C and me. And all my family friends. Took the kids out. The kids are already walking towards the mine. I'm just getting my jacket. Thank you. Super warm new jacket. What is Lila C? Lila C is the mine that basically put Death Valley and a whole bunch of people here on the map. As it is a mine, it is no longer in use. It has been gone for a hundred, over a hundred years. And people don't come out here because they say there's nothing here. There's nothing here. And which they're, they're reasonably true about that. They moved the majority of the buildings from old Ryan to new Ryan. There's a small eight pack of buildings that live at Death Valley Junction and I'll show you those on the outside. All that's really left here is a whole bunch of trash and maybe some foundations. But that's okay, maybe we can find a piece of Colmanite and let's just talk borax history. You and me and Lila C. <laughs> yeah, maybe Mary will be on camera, probably not. She's in charge of the kids today. So I can ah, see over go. there's like a trash now pile and there's trash piles all lined over here. So this is the mine right here. It was discovered in 1884 by the Kinsey brothers and they started mining it in 1890. But then 1907 is when the railroad came up to here and it looks like oh yeah look at that is that part of the rail line right there I think that's it there's the rail line we drove up a different road we didn't take the rail line up here but so they would load the stuff let me see if I can zoom in for you Ten on and I think that ended there and there were 200 people living here there were 200 people living here in its heyday. Um, in 1907, it was owned by the U.S. Borax and Chemical Company. And they owned it from 1907 to 1914. We are on a giant tailings pile. If you don't know what tailings are, and I will include the definition to what tailings are, it's basically the waste of the mines. Development began in 1903 when they found three beds of culminite six to 18 feet wide and at, le at least 2,500 feet long. So from the late 1800s until the 1907 when the TNT Railroad came here uh, and they had the little offshoot that would take your the borax back to Death Valley Junction, they used a tractor, uh, a tractor called Old Dinah. And you can actually see Old Dinah in Furnace Creek if you would like, and old Dinah is the tractor that died on the traction road that went all the way to Ivanpah. Oh my gosh, that's a great story. I've got the traction road on the list here, on the short list, and so we'll talk more about old Dinah there. But after um, old Dinah died in the desert, they went ahead and built the TNT Railroad, and then they had the small offshoot that came out here. Now this borax mine made bank. Oh my gosh, and then in its heyday and in its entirety, it made eight million dollars. Eight million dollars, that's a lot of money. It's a lot of money today, that was a lot of money back then. You can still see the remains of, you know, the, the wood pieces. That was the structure. Oh, let's see what's over here. Looks like there's some metal. There were lots of buildings here some sheet metal buried ah oh, look at them apples a brick lcw and aw one look how cool that is 
I think we're at the spot. These are all a lot of old foundations. I think we're at the spot where I can show you the picture of what it used to be and what it is now. Like I said, it had a small post office here. There was all kinds of buildings. And it was seven miles to get into Death Valley Junction. And people didn't want to walk that far. And some of this stuff is new, some of this stuff is old. Here you got the penny guy. This penny guy has put his penny markers throughout all these places around here. I don't know who he is. As you know, some of this glass is new because of the 70s. But then, look, at this is old. That's really old stoneware because it's super thick. There's another piece. Down this way! And here's a brick that's got something on it. That's kind of neat. There's everybody. Mary knows where there's one shaft and one at it. Now, the mine itself, the workings included three shafts, four at it, and two prospects and one large open pit, which means three holes down, four holes in, and two holes that looked like they were gonna check it out, but they didn't. And pretty much all of the adits have been collapsed. You can see the pylons from the foundations. More tailings piles, we're headed this way. The family's just staying a little far away so I can film. And what's interesting is not that people need to be coming out here. And they said, no, there's nothing here. Well, that's a lie, because there's all kinds of stuff here. There's just all kinds of history. But what's not here is houses. There's no houses, there's no cabin. So folks are kind of right. There's nothing here. There's nothing here just but a whole lot of trash. But the foundations are still here. Like there used to be a building that sat on there. And then, look at this, those are big. And like this was a basement to what? I don't know, let's see if I can get up here. I don't wanna get too far away from the family. I don't wanna come in here and see this. Wow! Oh, there's more tailings behind here. This was somebody's basement, maybe? Like I said, they collapsed all the adits. But look at this! Check this out. The wood behind the concrete. Let me turn around and show you where I'm at. Look at them apples. There's Mary checking on me. <laughs> We're gonna go, Mary's gonna go up top with me to see if we can find a different at it. Said this with the kids. Mary was pointing out, it took a lot of effort to bend these over so that people couldn't use it. And it is fascinating, like everything is just, like what's this little pile out of nowhere? And it had something sticking out of the thing and there's, they cut that off. They left here, there's a pipe underground. When they left here, they just were like, nobody is ever going to remember this place. Okay, we're, I made Mary climb to the top of a tailings pile. And those are tailings piles. Those ones are weird. I think that's just mountains? Quite possibly. Well, there's some structure was here, because look. There's more of those poles. And concrete. 
and cans. There is, oh, yep, see, lavender glass. Super lavender glass, which means it's old. Let's see, kind of looks like it was a window or a top to something. Oh, we found another at it. All right, see, I was, that's what I was thinking. That other tailing pile would mean another at it. And Mary knows, Mary already knew where one at it is, and we're gonna go to there in a minute. But I branched off this way with her. Whoa. Hey, we found another one. Is this the one that, you guys, two of them are here. Okay, now we found three of the four addits. Mary just saw the one though, but now we're gonna go check this one out. Like I said, we can't go in, but let's just go see what's going on. Obviously birds, oh, look at the little bird nest. Aw, hi little bird. No way guys, check that out. Eight million dollars came out of this thing. Look at that. It looks like the birds roost up there. Looks like we got one kind of weird old beer can and then a rock for, but that's at it number one. And yeah, it looks like they got that sealed off. It's, the air is so cool down here. I really wish I could find a piece of Colmanite. Uh, we got scat. Old scat. And let's go check out the other one. Here's coming out of the attic. And then right next to it is a second one. And this one's, you don't have to go far in, but also sealed off. Oh, this is a shaft. This is a shaft. Wow! Hello! Look at that. Can you see? And the air is so cold right here. There's that. And I gotta come out here. Ooh! Hopefully there's not weird stuff in that line that I'm smelling. Here's some nice thick concrete pylons. And there's the penny guy. Oh, what's that? Look at that beautiful rock wall. That is just gorgeous, okay. I might walk up there. Here's more foundations or pylons. I bet we'll find the penny guy around here somewhere. And there's some more old ceramics. We're all going down this tailings pile. This is the fourth stove that I found and they look all exactly alike. And it's because they move them out here and then what are you gonna do? You're not gonna take them back. There's more old ceramics. Ah, oh, look at that. I love old ceramics. Look at that, it was part of a teacup maybe. That was part of some kind of cup. And a piece of a plate, yeah, I see pieces of plates. It's really warm. I've already dropped one layer. There's another piece of a plate. And old cigar tin. See, there's just chunks of ceramics. Just blown up, they just destroyed everything. I'm so excited about this. This is my fourth stove that I have found in Death Valley. 
And like I mentioned, I found one in Widow Mine. I have found one at Colmanite. I have found one here, and I have found one in Lemoyne Cabin. And this is basically, there's your ovens. This would have been your cooktop. This would have been, I believe, either where they would have put pans or maybe your fire would have gone in. And it really is just pretty much, it's just so heavy that they're not going to pick it up and move it out. That doesn't make any sense. And there's another trash pile. And, oh! Is there an added up there? Is there a road? So the wall just kind of holds the mountain up? Okay. All right. That's Seth. There's Ty. And there's the families. Yeah. Having snacks. Almost snack time. I found something with writing. All right. What did we find? Oh, yeah. I found one of those earlier. I, I think they used to have to mark their bricks. There's a reason why that brick has writing on it or an embossing on it. Good find, guys. So we keep seeing, well, we'll walk over there in a moment because we're going to that other attic, but across the way are these rock walls. And some of them look like they're like a retaining wall, but some of them sometimes look like they might be foundation. But we're trying to get up to the attic before we lose daylight. Here's the rock wall. Look at that. Okay, and then it just kind of ends, and then we're in here, and okay, so it doesn't look like a foundation because it's not a square, and then there's another one over there, and then it comes across here, so this just must have been some kind of structural wall. Look at that. I bet the, there's more mines back there. We're going this way to get to the adit. There's more tailings piles, which means the other adits are this way. There's that giant rock. We just came from around on the east. We are going west around the mountain. Danny. Yeah. Uh, where the uh, thing is, is so the road's gonna go up and this giant tailing mountain, we're gonna go past that up to the next one, and then it's on the other side of that. The road we're on, yeah. here's the wash, and there's the road. There's that road that went back Seth was on when he was way up tall. Yep. I bet that's the road that comes over this way. So we just have to stay on the road, and it'll oh. take us there. Now we're up here. We haven't explored up this way. We know for a fact that there's a shaft or at it this way. And there's the old wood you can see. And because there were structures, people would camp here. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's look in. What we got? Oh, yeah. No, this isn't at it. Yeah. And another bird nest. They all seem to have a little bird nest. Oh. Look at that. Can you zoom in? You see anything? Nope. It's sealed off. What? Really? No, it's not. Uh, it kind of looks like to me when you're going to get back more. there. Okay, I'm going to zoom oh. all the way. See the very back of it? It's Stop. solid. I see. I don't see, I, I mean, Ooh, I see I a see. tiny little hole oh, up on the yeah. top. But they got that block, they don't, even if this was gone, they don't want you in it. Okay, so we're out of this adit, and then there's a shaft up above. But what a fun, science-filled adventure day. Both Mary and I love Amargosa. We love Death Valley Junction. So now we're here, and the kids are having a great day. We're all sweating though, because it's way hotter than we thought it would be. I'm in wool and down and all kinds of stuff. Cool. And yeah, it is kind of neat because it is safe enough that um, we can experience. Oh my gosh. 
There we go. I'm just holding on to my camera. Oh. Wow. So then the material would come up through this. That would come up through here, not the people. I don't know. There's another penny. So Lila C. is known as Old Ryan. It was discovered in 1884 by the Kinsey brothers. It was the first culminite mines in the region. Okay, here's part of where they loaded all the ore. And here's more of the wood. As you can see, its isolation hindered its development. And so the steam traction they took all this stuff down these roads to where we first parked and that's when it would get on the steam train and go all the way to Manville, which was 100 miles away. And then in 1907, they had the train. So William Tell Coleman is the man who actually first has the deed to the mine and he names it after his child, Lila C. Coleman. He figured out that it was here and they actually, dis they actually named Colemanite after Mr. Coleman and there's a town called Colemanite. That's my favorite place in Death Valley. He never actually got to mine any of this. Now Mr. Coleman was absolutely famous. He owned the Harmony Borax Works. We can go there sometime. It was Fr Francis Marion Smith that acquired it after Mr. Coleman and kept the name the same and he is the one who worked in conjunction with the Pacific Borax Company to get this place popping. And the funny thing about it is that they did nothing. In the very beginning they didn't even mine it. He just kind of owned it and he was really busy. Then his other mines were kind of getting played out and then he's like oh wow look at that. Now the opening of these borax mines caused the price of borax to drop two cents a pound and that actually triggered into motion two other mining areas of borax to go under. Okay, here's more structure right there by the base of the mine and there's probably the cans they use to blast the mine because there are some shafts that we still don't know where they are and maybe they weren't covered. And the last thing we need is a video of me falling down a mine shaft. Uh, maybe I'll get to go over and speak with Chris and go into a mine, but I'm not interested in having another, oh wow, Jenny almost died moment <laughs> on YouTube this morning. I'm walking back to the family. I better get down on the road. Um, I'm not sure I would rate this as super family friendly. Oh, look at that. Look at that little spot. It's all protective and flat. Looks like probably somebody sent up camp there. Okay, don't fall in the hole, says Mary. As I'm filming and walking. Okay, where's the hole? Oh, that hole. Okay, yeah, let's not fall in the hole. It's so beautiful out here. I just want to come and hang out, chill. The kids are way up ahead, but they do good. They get a little bit of um, independence, and then they know to stop and check back. Okay, look at that. It's a water pipe. Some kind of water pipe, and is the penny guy here? Yep, there's the penny guy. Okay, so if there was a water pipe here, then that means there used to be stuff here. We're walking back to the car, sun's going down. This is a mix of old trash, cause there's tins, like this, and then there's lavender glass. But then there's also new like 70s bottles. You like look over here, there's just glass everywhere. There's ceramic pieces, bottleneck. This is mainly looks like glass. But this is all old glass because it's all lavender. Almost all of it is lavender. Like, what's this little tiny piece of blue? Look at that. Little tiny piece of blue. The mysterious penny brought us a whole lid. That is a good find, Penny. That must have been a canister to something. Copenhagen. Copenhagen? What'd you find, Colton? A Copenhagen chew tin. Okay, we found a baby can. 
Look at how tiny this little can is. That's cute. This day and age, this is tiny, but back then this was probably like a legit normal size because it looks about six ounces, so it's a little two ounces short of a cup. We're gonna leave that there for somebody else to find. Taking my booty down the trash pile. More purple glass. Oh, more bricks! Oh, here's a different brick with words. Check out this brick, DBP. Doroma Company. Look at this. Little tiny hole under the rock. And I guarantee you a spider lives in there because something's living in that little hole. Look at this one. It's a blue bottleneck. Ah, it's really neat. And then this little piece has got writing on it. It says Brom. Something Brom. There's another little piece of the blue. Not sure where the rest of it is. I don't see any more. So many trash piles, so little time. So glad you could come along with me and all of us. And from my family to yours, remember to be grateful, make good choices in your own adventures, and I'll catch you on the flip side. One little known fact that people don't really realize is all of these houses that are on the back side of the Death Valley Junction, that's the opera house right there, are houses that were moved from Old Ryan. And these are the supervisor houses. That back one straight back became Marta's home and also if you see, uh, it matches the architecture, but these little eight pack of houses here are all built in the early 1900s and they were moved from Old Ryan to here because the junction wasn't built yet. The junction was just mining camps. It wasn't exactly the junction as we know it now. And I just gotta love to see the, you can see the old clothes lines. They all have like this, some little, almost looks like a garage. And most of them are uninhabitable. In the 70s, people were living here. But yes, there's sidewalks. As you can see, this is how you entered the town. You can see the little sidewalk right there. And there's sidewalks that go all the way back through the mini town. And that's where the supervisors lived. So they didn't have to go all the way back and forth from Ryan Camp to here on the railroad. Smash that like button. <laughs>